I'll be honest. I was ready to come in here and lampoon Konami for their unusually energetic wave of Silent Hill announcements that felt like they were almost being made at gunpoint. Yes, Konami has been the subject of some justified derision in recent years due to their hasty but brief exit from the game industry that was precipitated by some inexcusable behavior toward developers, but the relative intensity of that derision always felt odd to me when documented behavior by Activision and Ubisoft was noticeably worse. Instead, I took a step back, revisited my 5.0 video from years ago about a Konami that was just starting to dip toes back into the gaming waters, and for the first time really took a moment to closely examine what they've been doing ever since. Now, I don't claim to keep a close enough eye on Konami to know if there's been some widespread changing of the guard to accompany everything they've been up to of late, but it would be kind of bizarre to think that the same corporate roster that mistreated Hideo Kojima and jettisoned Koji Igarashi and Akira Sakuma as though they hadn't been printing money for the company for years is also responsible for this revitalization of the company we're seeing right now. Of course, it isn't out of the question. People are complex, after all, but... Is it likely? Let's start with Super Bomber Man R. The game was a highlight of the Switch launch and has since made its way to other platforms, and more importantly than anything else, it proved that whoever is running Konami now remembers that they own Hudson Soft's IPs, and based on how the game turned out, that they actually understand the material. This was not made by a bunch of know-nothings who were given a generic description of the Bomber Man series. These developers were fans. On a personal note, the announcement of Super Bomberman R2 for 2023 was a pleasant surprise to me, and is actually pretty high on my list of most anticipated games for next year. Konami has also come up frequently in regards to retro mini consoles that have been releasing over the last several years. They seem to be a constant presence whenever Nintendo wants to make a tiny NES or Super NES, or Sega a tiny Genesis. Their games have been so popular on these devices, in fact, that they leveraged their ownership of Hudson Soft and the PC Engine slash Turbo Graphics brand and made a Turbo Graphics Mini of their own. They may have been a little confused about the assignment as there's nothing miniature about it at all, but the list of games is spectacular, and it's great to have them available in a convenient HDMI connectable device. It may not have been intended as an olive branch to the gaming community over past Misty but it was a good one all the same. If you haven't noticed their presence in the space of retro collections of late, you haven't been paying attention. The Castlevania Anniversary Collection, Castlevania Advance Collection, Contra Anniversary Collection, Arcade Classics Anniversary Collection, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles The Cowabunga Collection all represent a major push by Konami to get their historic catalog out there for players to enjoy. If you haven't grabbed any of these, I highly recommend it, as with the exception of Castlevania Advance Collection, which is just exactly what it says on the tin, they're lined not just with the games that you would expect to be in bundles like these, but with plenty of off-the-beaten-path gems as well. Of course, they followed this up by announcing the upcoming Suikoden, Gate Rune, and Dunan Unification Wars, which is also getting plenty of buzz. At this point, it's clear that this is all part of a broader, concerted preservation effort from Konami. You might forget, this past summer, the official Konami store made the announcement that several games no longer available for purchase were being brought back. Specifics weren't given at the time, but sure enough, a wave of titles are available now on Steam as part of this effort. We also know now that the TMNT Kawabunga collection was a part of this initiative. Prior to all that, the Japanese branch made a similar announcement surrounding the Metal Gear Solid franchise, and although we're still waiting on the fulfillment of that one, taking the battery of Silent Hill announcements into account, as well as the Suikoden PS1 collection, Konami is obviously on a mission. Think we could get Vandal Hearts next, guys? Just putting it out there. Of course, there is an elephant in the room, and that's all the talent that laughter was shown the door a little less than a decade ago. Now, I'm not suggesting that they try to coax Kojima back to the company or anything of that nature. He's living his best life over at Koji Pro, and this is probably the best ending available for all involved in that mess. Still, it wouldn't hurt Konami's PR any for there to be some kind of mutual nod, a we good of sorts, hoping that the two sides are, in fact, good after everything that happened surrounding Metal Gear Solid V, and an acknowledgement of everything that the estranged talent did for the company during their peak years. Again, I have no idea if there's been a real regime change at Konami, but I think it would be better for everyone if the company gave us at least the impression of it. Gamers hold grudges, and after all this time, Konami is still a real sore spot for a lot of them. On the subject of both preservation and reconciliation, a nod to gamers would go a long way too as Konami continues moving to re-establish its presence in the industry. The solution here is obvious if you followed the story for any amount of time. With no real emotional attachment to the Metal Gear franchise or the Silent Hills project, I'm just happy to see all of these games making a comeback. Konami's brief recent efforts dispensing retro collections is some of the best work ever done on that front, and if they put half the energy into revitalizing these franchises for the future that they're showing Silent Hill these days, I'm really excited to see what they produce over the next five years or so. That's all for now. If you like this video, then please be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe as it really helps grow the channel. Until next time, I'm Patrick Mifflin, sounding off.